The city is our newsroom, CP24. Welcome back to CP24. Cosmetic surgery is a growing business, but it can also be a risky business. How do you know if a cosmetic surgeon really knows what they're doing and what should you do to ensure your safety? Joining us with more, Dr. Stephen Mulholland with Spa Medica. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Anne. We talked about uh, injectables the last time you were here. Uh, that's scratching the surface, literally and mm -hmm. figuratively. We want to move to cosmetic surgery, far more serious. Absolutely. The results can be terrific. The results can be devastating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when we're talking the non invasive med spa type procedures you'll be concerned about your appearance but you're generally not going to run the risk of death when you have cosmetic surgery you can die it's a very serious decision changing your shape is compelling to some people you want to make sure that you come out the other end achieving what you want and you're alive and well when a client comes to you and mm -hmm. says I want to do something as serious as a facelift or breast implants or whatever right. do you ask them to to take some time and really think about what they're doing, or do you automatically say, yes, let's get you, you know, the blood work and get organized and book a date? It's a good question, and no, no, we don't, actually. We operate on far fewer people than we ever see. And so there's a screening process. They see uh, the nurse consult coordinators. They go through the risks and the benefits. They understand the seriousness of the decision. Then they meet with me. Then they have to be screened by an internist and clear medically. They have to be seen by an ophthalmologist if there's eye work. So at the end of the day, by attrition, we eliminate a lot of people yeah. that really haven't thought about it. Do you actually say to clients, I don't think that you are ready for this or I am not comfortable uh, operating on you in the, in the shape mentally or physically that you're in? Absolutely. And you just brought up the two reasons. Many people are not mentally ready. So if they've had a, a loss in the last year, either a relationship mm -hmm. or a job or they're in some bereavement phase or they're on uh, antidepressants and or mood altering drugs and they don't have a letter from a psychiatrist or they're doing it to advance their career or to save a marriage, those are all the wrong reasons to undergo cosmetic surgery. And with extreme makeover, nip and tuck, and, uh, and the swan, they look, well, geez, I'm, I'm depressed like that person. And they had a face if their life was great. In one hour. And, and in one hour. And that's, it, that's Hollywood, and, and this is reality. It's not yeah. like Holt Renfrew. You're not walking in, trying on a coat, and walking mm -hmm. out. I want to talk about the big business aspect mm -hmm. of this. This is a huge business in North America. And sometimes people have the perception that some cosmetic surgeons are doing this just for the money. Let, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about that aspect of it, the business side of this. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, there is a large market for people looking their best. And uh, I've been doing this now almost a decade. And when I started in 96, 97, there wasn't the same hype. Now you can't open a magazine or watch TV without a reality self-help makeover. And so, yeah, there is money involved, and so patients have to be careful. Buyer beware. Research your physician. Make sure they've been doing it a while. How many cases of the particular procedure they're interested in, what kind of complications they've had, because we all get complications. Where do you get that information? How do you source that? You know, what you need to do is, is basically um, go on. There's a couple of websites, uh, selectingaphysician.com, cosmetic surgery websites, um, the common sense things, you know. Word of mouth referrals. Does the physician have good word of mouth referrals? Has your friend had a procedure done by them? Do they have before and afters? They'll show you. Can me, you meet with patients? Go on the uh, provincial website, College of Physicians and Surgeons. Have they lost their license? Are they being sued? Um, all those things. And, and at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable about your doctor and they haven't talked about the risks, like death and heart attack and stroke, mm -hmm. Perhaps they're not informing you as fully as you need to be. Why is there a risk of, of heart attack, stroke, mm -hmm. death? Why is there that risk? Well, unfortunately, most of the procedures we need to uh, we need to perform these under either IV sedation or general anesthesia. So it's pretty hard for a plastic surgeon to terminate your existence doing the surgery. It's usually the anesthetic, the anesthetic risk. And so one of the biggest um, um, developments and technological advancements in our specialty is the ability to deliver safe, in or outpatient anesthesia. Some doctors yeah. operate out of hospitals, mm -hmm. others operate out of offices. Is there a difference? There sure is. If you're going to have a heart attack or stroke, you best to be in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the top 10 guys in this country don't operate in a hospital, mm -hmm. so you have the best guys doing it in private centers. Mm -hmm. Now, they are certified, so make sure your facility is certified by the Canadian Association for Ambulatory Surgical Facilities. Mm -hmm. Ask, as a big name, are you certified? Mm -hmm. And then I always use an anesthetist. I would always ask, are you using a fully certified anesthetist to look mm -hmm. after me and my heart while you're looking after my face or my body. Can you check the record of the anesthetist as you well? You sure can. Do yeah. some due diligence. Where has he worked? How long? And has he, you know, does he do a lot of hospital cases? And how long have you been working with the anesthetist? What's the team relationship like? What's the best advice? Anybody is thinking about this. And I do know that in some cases, people ask for or are given gifts of 
of gift certificates, mm -hmm. if you will, for cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery. And so this is the time when people are thinking about mm -hmm. looking better or giving to those who want to look better. So what's your best advice to make sure that the person is smart, safe, and is happy with the results? Yeah. Best advice, shop carefully. Do your diligence. Interview your physician as much as they're interviewing you and dig deeper, find out how long, how often, how many times, and how are you going to keep me safe? I want to quickly show mm -hmm. some photographs. Now, on the, on the happier on the side happy of side, this, yes. there are some very successful stories, mm -hmm. and people have chosen and, and been very smart and careful and have been very happy with the results, and that's yeah. why everybody's still in business. This it was a facelift or a thread lift? This is a lady who underwent an endoscopic facelift, oh. so this is using small telescopes to take a before picture mm -hmm. and turn back the clock on the brow and the cheek and the gel with a minimally invasive type approach. Nothing dramatic, and she looks like Hillary Clinton now on the right side. <laughs> Nothing too dramatic, yep. but just refreshing looking. The body, the, again, body very common as well. You've had a few kids. And, people and traveling and into southern climates this time of the year. Mm -hmm. They want to look okay in a bathing suit. This is fairly dramatic. This is the pre with an awful lot of uh, fat Extra and cellulite. Stuff. Yeah, Couple which is kids, normal it's for an, all of us. And so she had a tummy tuck and a little bit of a liposuction mm -hmm. again. Um, uh, most of these procedures do take some time, downtime. And, and that's the other thing. Don't think you can be back to work in a week. Most and it can of these be painful. We have painful. to caution people. It hurts like heck <laughs> and it looks good, but it takes weeks and weeks of recovery. Usually up to six weeks till you can get your body, your face back into where you want it to be. What's on the horizon? On the horizon would be um, a blending of the cosmetic surgery with the uh, approach to not aging, the DNA, uh, unlocking the sequence of why we age and, and how we can retard those cellular processes that lead to that drooping and aging. Put you out of business if we figure that out. I would be happy to be out of business. <laughs> I can understand that. I it do. was 10 years from now. That's yeah. right. Dr. Stephen Mulholland, Spa Medica, thank you very thank much. You. Always great to work with you. Thank You're you. watching CP24. Coming up, how one job seeker found a way to really stand out. <laughs>